we had a um, incredible week to say the least. Praise God. Um, and I think it started off last Sunday. Um, it culminated on Wednesday night when we all got together and talked about the church and direction and people's hurts and feelings. Um, Thursday morning after uh, after um, uh, the Wednesday night meeting, I thought, okay, we we did it, we let everybody talk, we explained, we, uh, I should be okay right now, right? Wrong. Um, me and God had not talked. And that was a big problem. One of the big problems was that I had nothing to say to anybody because God had not talked to me. Amen. And I can't just get up and just start making up stuff and trying to... Uh, uh, get you to uh, understand me because if I'm doing it in my own, it would sound weird. Amen. So, um, Friday morning, I'm on the Metro, right? Drea drops me off, and I am on the Metro, and I'm riding in to work. I try to study a little bit of Hebrew, but I put the book away, and I don't know, you guys see Passion of Christ? Yes. Remember that? Bald head guy who's playing safe with no eyebrows. Yeah. I just felt like he was talking to me. And he was like, You can't do this. You should quit. Those people don't care about you. And I felt like voices, I mean like like he was some the, the spirit was trying to say, This isn't worth it. You need to just stay away from this. And so I was sobbing. I don't mean like crying. There is a word in Hebrew called astab when God says um, he, he, um, he grieved that he had made man. It's called astab in Hebrew. It means to sob in pain. It's usually meant for a child when they, get, they can't stop crying because they're, they're so bitter. And so I was in this type of crying. And I had my hat so I had to over my head so nobody could see me. And um, so I'm just like sobbing. And you know, like people don't care about you, don't worry about it. You can, you know, finally do the things you want to do. And I remember just starting to say at that time, Lord, I'm hurting and I'm crying at the same time. I'm hurting, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. And then I said, um, I just hope somebody is praying for me. When I said that, my cell phone rang. And somebody called me from Maryland. All I know is brother's name is Cyrus. And he said, I saw your YouTubes and um, I wanted to call and pray for you. I don't know this brother. I had to ask him how to get my number. Um, and he got the number from a friend uh, of mine named Karen, who uh, emails me from the YouTubes. And this particular morning, he wanted to pray for me. And so I told him, yeah, go ahead and pray for me. I didn't even tell him, you know, that I've been crying or anything. I just said, yes, go ahead and pray for me. And um, he prayed for me. I mean, it was like Pastor Ben, you know. Um, I didn't know when he was going to stop. <laughs> no offense, Pastor. <laughs> but I, I thought, you know, I was going to have to say, hey, this is my stop. <laughs> and I was far from downtown. But um, he prayed for a long time, and then he began to speak um, some things, and then we hung up. And, um, what was given to me through that prayer was what I had been asking God for. Because on the night of December uh, 31st, 
2010. Um, when the clock rang over to 2011, I went to my room and almost like in anger said, did you speak to me or not? You know, and that was my attitude. God, if you spoke to me, tell me. If you didn't speak to me, tell me. But I don't want to talk right now. I want to go to sleep. And I went to sleep that night and I had not received anything from God um, concerning the matter. And it says, um, I asked God of the Metro after this, did you call me to speak this message? And the Lord said, yes. So I said, well, why didn't it happen? And he said, that will be answered in my presence. It's not for you to know right now. And I said, well, why would you let me go through this? And he said, I want you to feel what I felt and not just read about what happened to me. So you can tell the world how much I love them. He said, I told you to warn the world of my coming and teach them so no one could argue against it. You were obedient all the way to the end. December 31st, midnight, 2010, you were obedient. For your obedience, you received the same thing I received for my obedience. Loss of friends, rejection, and mocking. Some were loyal, and some were loyal to me. But on the most part, you got to experience what I experienced on the cross. Could you turn your Bible to Acts chapter 1, verse 6? The Lord said, do you think it was a coincidence that 2010 there were more disasters and more people died of natural disaster than any time in the history of mankind? He said, I did warn you about 2010. He said, and do you think it was an accident that on December 31st at midnight, black birds fell out of the sky? and fish died in the ocean without explaining? He said, I told you about 2010, and you were obedient. But when you're obedient, sometimes you'll get the same thing I got when I was um, obedient. In Acts chapter 1, excuse me, you guys, verse 6, it says, um, so when they together, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the date the Father has set in his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. 